Hey guys, it's Sarah with Sarah's Hearts Home. I'm so glad y'all are back at my channel. Today I am so excited because, can you see these plants on the table behind me? I am going to start filling my window boxes with flowers today and oh man, I'm so happy about that. It is time y'all. And today is hot. I think that there is rain moving in, like probably thunderstorms again. Since it's spring in the south, that's kind of what happens. But um, anyway, yeah, it's a hot day. There was a lot of wind yesterday. And um, anyway, I'm looking forward to being outside in the sunshine, even if it is hot, and filling my window boxes with beautiful flowers. So. I am going to lay them out first, but I got these little polka dot plants. I thought they were really cute. Kind of a light pink with green. So I've got that. Um, I've got this uh, periwinkle. I really like this as well. It looks so pretty just draping out of the window boxes. So I got some of that. Um, I also got um, the spike. Um, Dracaena? Is that how you say that? I don't know. Anyway, this grassy weed. <laughs> so I have that. Um, and then I also got, uh, wow, well, this is a eucalyptus. Um, it's, it's direct sun, so I mean, I'm not going to be planting it in here, but um, I also got some of this. I think this is Creeping Jenny, I think is what that is but it's a shade loving plant as well um now this won't be going in my flower box but it is italian oregano <laughs> couldn't pass that up at my local greenhouse also um just a couple of these dark purple sweet potato vines they don't mind the shade either and so i'm just gonna hope that they will trail down my boxes and just look so pretty all right, and then what I grow every year is the impatience because they're so good in the shade and that is what my front porch is. So I just got some white ones. I also got some pink ones. So I'm doing white and pink this year with the greenery and I think it's gonna look really nice. So let's go get started. So I just moved my table over here into the shade in front of the porch. So. Like I said, I got a lot of these from my local greenhouse. They are still a little bit cheaper than Lowe's is. However, Lowe's had a little bit more of the variety um, of a few of the other things that I wanted. I wanted some more of these creeping type vines and just some variety like that. So that is why I also went to Lowe's. But I got these impatience and a bunch of the other things at my local greenhouse. I also have a little bit of extra dirt in case I need them for my window boxes, but I'm just going to do, um, I've got this one and then I've got over here. So, and then I might, if I have extra, I'll put some in that, but anyway, just not a whole lot. There were no, um, Boston ferns yet to hang up. Well, there were at the greenhouse, but they were so tiny. I was like, I am not paying 15 bucks for these tiny little ones. Um, my grocery store had them a couple of weeks ago for 15 and I really should have gotten them. They were beautiful, but it was like a cold day. <laughs> yeah, um, my head just wasn't in that mental space yet, I guess. Anyway, all right, let's get planting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of lay out how I want them to look. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that one didn't want to be separated. I do have an ivy vine, and I don't know, it might come back, but <laughs> it's not looking too promising, is it? All right, well, let's see if I can separate these lovelies. There we go. Okay. Now, the key to having beautiful flower boxes is to really stuff them. The years that I've just kind of skimped, mm, they just did not look nearly as good. So 
I'm doing just kind of an every other one pattern of um, white, pink, white, pink, white, pink, white, pink. <clears throat> so that'll look nice. And then I only have one of these tall grasses, so I'm just trying to decide whether I just kind of want to put it in the middle of the two boxes or how I want that to look. Also trying to decide where I want the sweet potato because I only got two. So what I think I'm gonna do is put one here and then I'll start the other side of where the door is there with this one. I also am gonna want another vine in here. So put that there. I also wanted to say that I started by um, really wetting the soil in my flower boxes um, yesterday. Uh, you know, they just get dry over the winter, so the past few days I've just been kind of dousing them with water just to rejuvenate, revive the soil, if you will. When I pull a big pot, a uh, big plant out of a pot like this, I will kind of separate it just a little bit so that the roots will spread out. So here's what it's looking like so far. All right, I'm moving on down to this box now. And I'm just starting out with my sweet potato vine. Hopes that it will nicely trail down the side there. Well, I finished planting. I'm gonna do a nice watering here. But I have a nice Snapdragons, Dusty Miller, and Eucalyptus along with this Hi Ho Time. I had planted it last year and it's kind of hanging on, so I'm just gonna let it go. I planted my oregano in this little pot here near my door as well. And then here is what my front porch is looking like so far. So I got these all planted. And of course they will fill out, fill in <laughs> nicely. I didn't do anything with this. It's just ivy and the ivy's climbing. I also have um, this little flower box, which I think is really cute. And then up here, I like how this box turned out. I think it looks really nice. All right, it's time to get this stuff a nice drink. So I set my plants outside to start hardening off. Here is a tomatillo. You can see, you know, different ones are at different stages, but um, they're all, like most of them are getting really, really big. So I've got them sitting out here to start hardening. And then I have the rest of them out here on the back porch. So, yeah, they're all looking good. These tomatoes are much smaller and yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking that even though the cabbage is small, I'm just gonna go ahead and get it in the ground as soon as I've got it hardened off. Cause I don't wanna get it in the ground much later than now. Anyways, I think I'm gonna pick some of the Swiss chard to have for lunch. I absolutely love Swiss chard. And this here grows up every year, basically volunteer. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick some of that. Check it out, the irises are getting ready to bloom. And they're so pretty when they do. This time of year, it's all about dirt under the fingernails <laughs> and fresh radishes and all the things from the garden. It's so fun. I just got done planting um, some hollyhocks and I actually did hollyhock starts. Um, they're like a root. And a lot of people say that that is a better way to start hollyhocks versus by seed because they're a lot less um, prone to that rust, which 
I had on my other hollyhocks that I started from seed. So I'm interested to see how these will be. I just planted them along the fence line in a little vacant spot by my little garden up here by the house. Well, I ate them. Woo! Wow, they're spicy. Seriously. <laughs> Every year I have to wonder, why do I plant radishes? <laughs> I'll tell you the one way that I really love radishes, and that is to um, fry them, like saute them in butter and a little bit of salt and pepper. The spice is totally gone from them when you do it, and they just have like this really nice taste to them. So that's how I like radishes. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? Oh my goodness. Mmm, smells amazing. You give these chickens the radish tops because you know they'll like that. There you go. What do you think? Huh? You like that? What about you? No? Nah, that one just wants out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, when I was down here this morning, I had shoveled up some galt manure and I had forgotten to take my shovel. See the shovel? <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's it going? Mm -hmm. Hey. All right, I need my shovel. Well, spring just keeps on springing around here. It's always so much fun. Um, today I started a whole flat full of um, things like yellow squash, zucchini, cucumbers, melons, pumpkins, squash, things like that, just to get a little bit of a head start before I pop them into the ground. Um, yesterday, yeah, these days are so full, like, <laughs> What happened what day? But I think it was yesterday. Um, we laid all of the fabric down in our big garden down in the field. So as soon as we get all the drip line in, I'll be able to start planting down there. I should have taken you guys along with me, rolling all that out. I think I can probably um, insert a couple little clips for y'all so you can see that. But anyway, that was that. Now today, just now, I got... Um, a little goodie package from Berlin Seed, and I'm pretty excited, so I wanted to show you what I got. Okay, so here is the loot. <laughs> first things first. I got another bundle of the onion plants. These here are um, the yellow Spanish onions, and they should keep pretty well for me during, um, you know, the the winter or the fall or whatever. Um, I believe there's about 75 in a bundle. So I've got those. And that's in addition to the red onions, the Walla Walla Sweet and the candy onions. All right, pretty excited about these. I have an Adams and a John's Elderberry. And look at that. It is already starting to sprout. So that is really exciting. Um, they were extremely affordable. So now I have two elderberries that I'm gonna be growing and I'm so excited about that. I also got, um, I should have two, I think. I thought I ordered two. 
anyway, of the rhubarb. Oh, it's right here in front of me. <laughs> anyway, yes, I ordered two of the crimson red rhubarb, and look, do you see that? It's already starting. The description on this one says that this variety is considered by some to be the best flavored rhubarb available with a perfect sweet tart combination that makes rhubarb so unique. Shows good weather hardiness and adapts to many soil types and growing conditions. So I got two crimson red rhubarb. I also got a bundle of 25 Jersey Night Asparagus. I'm excited because the Jersey Night is an all-male variety and so it's not, um, it doesn't like produce all the fronds with the blossoms and stuff, or the berries on it rather. Anyway, I'm excited about an actual asparagus bed. So I have 25 plants to put in the ground also. I have more raspberries and they are coming soon, but I had really wanted to try the Caroline variety. So I did just get two plants and it says, see I got Heritage, Heritage is coming. This one is a larger berry than the Heritage. And I'm, I'm just, you know, it was one that I really wanted to try. So I just got two of them. Anyway, that is some things to plant. Now moving on, if you've watched my microgreen video, you know that I have been wanting some trays that were smaller. Berlin seed, and let me tell you what, these are heavy duty. Like they are much more heavy duty than the trays that I got. So heavy duty. Anyway, I had wanted some smaller trays. Well, to do the microgreens in. Look at this. So affordable and inexpensive. Now I would still um, recommend getting your actual microgreen seeds elsewhere. Um, I mean, they're, you can get them from Berlin, but they're not quite as cheap. But, so affordable for these trays. So I got a set of four. And yeah. I'm so excited for these. These are um, 10 by 10. Now they also have the 1020 of the solid tray, but then they have, so you could make up two different sets with two 1010s. They also have five fives, five by fives. So you could do like eight, I think it is, right? five by five trays in your 1020 and grow all the different types. So I, I don't know, I'm so excited for these because you know I was really um, wanting to grow microgreens, but the 1020 trays, like doing four of those, isn't that what I did? It's a lot. So anyway, I'm really excited for these. So see more microgreens in our future. And like I said, I'm extremely pleased with the quality of these. So I've just been out here working in my garden tonight. The radishes are growing well, arugula, spinach, lettuce. Over here I've been working on mulching the red onions and also I have been feeding the cabbage plants with some aged cow manure. <laughs> it's very nice um, dirt. I wish my garden looked like this. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so I've been feeding them with that and then also just tucking them in with some mulch. Cabbage are very heavy feeders and they also like to be um, mulched. And so that's what I was working on this evening also. Um, you can see over here is my larger onion bed and I just tucked that in as well. It's really a nice evening and so I've just been working on some things here in the garden and it just, it feels nice. It feels really good. 
Well, we've got our golf cart full of um, some tea posts and some flower seeds and the seed spreader, rake. We're gonna head down to the big garden. Can you see our big garden down there? Oh. Hi guys. That's where we're headed. It's a beautiful day, absolutely beautiful. I think it's right around 71, 73, somewhere in there. And yeah, so where those trees are is a nice spring and then a creek flows down through. And you can see the black plastic we've laid. Oh, I guess the kids are waiting for me for the other gate. There they go. The field is so lush this time of year. It's absolutely beautiful. I just love it. Love it. Beautiful day. So Nathan dug out the spring a few days ago to make it deeper so that we can set a pump. So the goal is to set a pump, like a well pump, down into the spring. So Nathan dug it out a lot deeper so that hopefully we'll be able to set it in. However, we're hoping that the water clears out good for that. But anyway, yeah, we're very hopeful because we have a large garden that we're going to be planting and it's 150 by 30 so um, feet. It's a big garden and I'm planning to grow wildflowers at one end. I also have some um, elderberry and then also we're going to be planting um, I think I'm trying to remember how many raspberry bushes did I buy 20 and 10? I think that was what I did. Um, raspberry bushes and then I got a couple more. So let's check out this spring. It is much deeper than it was. Like so much deeper. And it is clearing out. I don't know if you can see that, but it really is clearing out. So that's really good news. And the creek bank isn't quite as nice as it once was a couple days ago, but it's just slowly flowing out and it is flowing out clear. So that's good. Anyway, this is, um, these are locust trees and they're getting ready to flower. So a few days ago, we came out here and we laid all of this fabric down and just stapled it down. You ready? We'll head on down here, see what we can do. I think I'm gonna plant corn along here. And then a whole bunch of stuff. I've got a whole layout plan. It'll be here in this black plastic. We're gonna, um, roll out some of the black fabric um, lengthwise here and then we will um, kind of cut a trench in it and we'll be able to put our asparagus and rhubarb and raspberries in it. It would also really be nice to have some um, like fruit trees or blueberries or something down here as well. But we shall see one thing at a time. But right now what I'm really wanting to do is more towards the end of this stretch, I am wanting to um, plant flowers. Sound pretty? Does that sound nice? Flowers? Yeah. At the end? Oh, you want me to drive all the way? More towards the end is where we're gonna plant them, yeah.
what we're gonna do is just get all the clods and like the grass out and we're just gonna like make a little bed here and this is what we're gonna plant all of our flowers in he's he's chopping like it's a hoe I can get that out just keep going with the rest of it we're just gonna rake it to the side and make like a little bed Good job, guys. Look at all these sunflower seeds. The summer ones that I've saved. I don't know if there's anything in this one anymore. Um, summer ones that I've saved. And then I also had gotten a big bag of them from Johnny's last year. Just didn't get them planted. Anyway, and then I had gotten some of these off of Amazon. You can crumble it in there, but there probably isn't anything in there. Um, they're like a lot of seeds. So got that one, I've got this one, I've got more Xenia, um, I don't know, I think these were just in and out. Just a minute, and then this wildflower mix here. I've also got one more of the Xenias that are the cactus mix, and they should be here today, so. Anyway, what do you think? You're right. Wait, wait, is it closed? Okay, yes, you can dump them in. Go ahead. All right. You might not All right, that. so try that out. I don't know exactly, but don't don't ride it on the um, the little bank we made, okay? Mm -hmm. Ride it just inside of that. Okay, mm -hmm. can, can you come inside just a little bit more? All right, and then try it out. We'll see if I've got it set right. Go ahead. All right, there they go. Oh, that's fine. I know. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy, you come back? Yep, yep, come back. Come back. So we're just gonna end up putting the sunflowers out. I was initially thinking like a row of them. <laughs> we'll see here. Oh my. When you have people help, you never know. You just never know. Whee! All right, here we go. Let's see how we can do this here. Actually, hmm, I don't even know. Maybe I'll start more like this. I see them coming out. Can you walk about that fast? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Maybe too fast. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hopefully it does what I want it to do. <laughs> Turn around. You don't. There you go. So, Becca's taking a tiny turn for me. <laughs> We're just lightly covering the seeds with some dirt. I know it's a little cloddy and it doesn't look as nice as it once did, but um, if we don't cover it some, the birds are just going to eat all that nice seed. So, munch the lunch. Yep, lunch to lunch. Munch the munch. lunch. Munch to lunch. Munch the lunch. 